When we're thinking about Aurora photography, one of the biggest challenges really is how to showcase the Aurora other than just a green swash across the sky. You know, that's one of the biggest uh, things we want to showcase, but without some sort of context of like a foreground, some snow, some trees, a building or an igloo or an anookshuk, it's going to look a little bit, um, well, uninviting and not that interesting. The opposite of that is getting some amazing spruce trees here in the foreground. So. These trees are gonna help us in a few ways. One, they're gonna give us a lot of context. They're gonna be a beautiful element. But two, which is the second most important thing of Aurora photography, is they're gonna give us something to focus on. I think, frankly, one of the most challenging things about Aurora photography is where and how to focus. So having these dominant foreground elements here will give us something to focus on. And it's also gonna make it so the photo looks really crisp. We actually have something in the foreground that's sharp tack sharp and then that beautiful aurora overhead is going to give us that beautiful green uh, hue. Hey, Court here from NatHab. We are in a beautiful location in Churchill, Manitoba, what I view as one of the best places for Aurora viewing and of course Aurora photography uh, in the entire world. We're in a beautiful part of Churchill, which is the Boreal Forest, one of the most um, known and revered things about Churchill is it's the confluence of these major biomes. We've got the tundra, the Arctic tundra, just a little further out there. But right now we're tucked in this beautiful boreal forest. So we see these incredible black and white spruce trees all around us. This is the ideal thing for foreground elements in Aurora photography. We're gonna be using one of our bigger, fancier cameras. I have a mirrorless uh, with interchangeable lenses. We also have a tripod. That is an absolutely critical element to proper Aurora photography. I've got my ultra wide angle lens on. This is a 16 to 35. Um, I'm on a full frame camera. If you're on a crop frame, go for something like a 10 to 22. Next, I'm gonna put my camera on a two second timer delay. This helps a lot when I'm pressing the shutter button, I'm not actually moving the camera as it's starting to take that photo because we are gonna be doing long exposure photography here. Long exposure, what do I mean by that? Well, um, I'm usually shooting somewhere between five and maybe even 20 full seconds. That is gonna be quite variable. The interesting thing with the Aurora is a really, really active Aurora. Um, it's gonna be pretty bright. That's why I'm saying you don't need a super fast lens. A pretty bright Aurora, I might be shooting at five seconds, maybe 10 seconds, but when that Aurora is moving, when it's bright, when it's actually got that curtain, kind of a serpentine look to it, you don't wanna have a really long exposure because the movement in the Aurora will get blended and you'll just have this very diffuse green when a faster shutter actually stops it down and you get the definition in that auroral curtain. And that's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to photograph. Let's kind of summarize all that into uh, the way I start my aurora photography. It's usually gonna be at 10 second exposure, ISO 800 and F2.8. Those three things are really how I begin my photography. And oftentimes that's how I end my photography. I don't switch around a whole, whole lot. But if I am switching around, it's usually with that shutter speed, and it's usually when the Aurora gets really, really active so that I can freeze the motion a little bit better in a highly active Northern Lights show. I am framing my shot here. I see this beautiful stand of spruce trees, and I notice there's one in the corner that's just a little bit angled. So I'm actually gonna put that deliberately coming out of the corner of the scene. It is pretty imperative that you focus on the foreground. So like I was saying, having trees in the foreground is a really, really helpful thing because it gives you something to focus on. Use autofocus to get that perfect focus on the tree. And then by switching to manual, that means every time I wanna recompose and take the shot, it doesn't have to refocus on that specific part. I can actually recompose my photo to get that tree in the corner exactly where I want it. So now we can take all the photos we want and instantly it's gonna take that shot and not have to autofocus and refocus each and every time. And let's take some shots. And with Aurora photography, the thing is, is it is night, it is dark. You wanna have these trees a little bit silhouetted. You don't wanna get the light out of every single branch, every single snowflake. Um, it's supposed to be a little bit dim. It's supposed to be a little bit shadowy. So making sure it is dark and not overly bright is a pretty key thing. Uh, that photo checks all those boxes. 
And honestly, I'm happy with my settings. All I'm really gonna change now is wait for the Aurora to be doing different things. Honestly, in these kind of shows, every second's a little bit different. So I'm just gonna keep on taking shots. So we're set up a new location. The Aurora is just absolutely kicking right now. So we've got a new foreground set of elements. Uh, we've got trees, a little bit more stunted, but the Aurora is just really, really going strong. So we're gonna wanna capture this in its moment. Some people will focus to complete infinity or try to focus on the stars, and that's great. The Aurora itself is never gonna be sharp because it's a wispy, green, cloudy, figure basically so if you're going to focus on something you, you don't want your foreground element you don't want your your tp or your tree your igloo whatever is in the foreground you can't have that out of focus at the expense or in place of the stars like you don't want the stars in focus but the foreground not in focus Churchill is the best place in the world to see the Northern Lights for, well, several reasons, but one main one is that it is directly underneath the Aurora Oval. But it's basically where the, the Earth's magnetic field lines dip down towards the Earth. So when those solar particles come streaming towards the Earth by way of solar wind and solar flares and solar eruptions, those particles stream down along those lines and that's what creates the Aurora. So the fact that we're right underneath those Aurora lines, that Aurora Oval, we're getting those Aurora lines. And those are the ones we want because it's an amazing, amazing, brilliant Aurora. Look how it's wavy, look at the curtains, you can see the rayed striations. Um, this is what it's like on an average night here in Churchill, this is amazing. Okay, so we've got this snow coach bombardier uh, machine in front of us, kind of a, an old timey relic of exploration and transportation in the Arctic with Northern Lights above us. And we are in this tundra snowscape environment. So really just a mixture of everything North. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use our little flashlight here to paint light on the snow coach to bring a little bit more light into the scene to illuminate it because it's a cool piece we want to we want to be able to see it see maybe some of the color some of the texture um, but we don't want the whole scene to be overly bright because we want that nightscape effect to be really true in the scene so we're exposing for the stars and the aurora but this way i can bring some light in the foreground Okay, so I'm taking a photo without the light painting for starters, just to show, well, to see, to test, and show you exactly what's going on with the scene. The amount of time you have the shutter open or the, the shutter speed of the shot is very much gonna dictate how long and how much I paint this machine or the foreground element. So uh, the only real way to figure this out is to experiment and try. So again, I have 10 seconds on the clock in order to paint this machine. So one, two, three, four. I'm just gonna give it a little blast of light. Just a little bit, okay, that's it, that's it. Like just so little and you'll be surprised. I bet you, oh yeah, okay, that's, <laughs> that's actually, I don't normally do this. That was actually pretty close to perfect. Let me, let me get you. I mean, that's, that's what I'm going for. Like, just super subtle little light. That was almost too much, to be honest. I'm gonna increase my exposure from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. That means I can use the same amount of light, but it will be indeed more subdued. And remember, I just blasted it for like, maybe one second or less. So one, oh yeah, I like that, yeah. So it is, it's a very, very subtle difference. Not much, but it was just a little bit less light to make it look more natural. I mean, I think that's one of the key things is with scenes like this, I'm trying to make a natural light on this machine. And that's the brilliance of light painting. So when I prepare for a trip up to Churchill to photograph the Aurora, I'm really constantly reviewing these things in my mind, all these lessons of the shutter speed and the composition, because when I get out here, you know, it's exciting. You see the Aurora, uh, it's also cold, it's dark. You're working with mittens and gloves. And so just kind of memorizing these things is just part of the deal. Uh, when you do that, you're really freeing your mind up for the creativity, for finding those compositional elements. Uh, also, when I'm out here, I really have to remind myself to be present. And I try to remind myself to sometimes just leave the camera there and look up and just be in awe of this spectacular beauty.